Good afternoon and welcome to my daily chat. This episode number is 993. Countdown of seven, so a week from now, we're hitting the thousands broadcast. Someone's got a really annoying backup sound beeping away from the end of it here at the camera. But anyway, um, <laughs> so welcome to my broadcast. This episode number 93, as I mentioned, today's topic is about self-care over-caring because it's a blend of these things and it's really breaking down the whole codependency trap we fall into. And she's actually, actually seeded this idea because a friend of mine who I'm going to collaborate on a little series about uh, codependency next month sent me a little um, review list. So thank you, Janie, for that. Give me something to work with and I just gave me an inspiration for this talk today. So today I'm going to talk about the traps we fall into, which I would call codependency because of the fact we want to care in a relationship and also where we neglect care mistakenly. That about covers it. <laughs> So feel free to interact with any questions, something like that. You can do while you're watching, while you're watching live. I'll tell you at the back end of the broadcast where you find the replays, and where you can watch me on other platforms because I do actually have a um, a backup plan. Um, let's just dive in, shall we? The paradigm of codependency is a big topic, so I'm not going to cover the whole thing now. I'm just going to use this slice of the cake, so to speak, to talk about it now because it's something we do as as people. Now, you may consider yourself a very caring person. In fact, you may care for other people maybe a bit too much, which is a bit of the codependency trap. The other part of it, though, is, more importantly, is how, not what, not if, but how you take care of yourself. Because you may think you're doing a great job taking care of yourself. But when I share my open your eyes to some possibilities, just to be clear. The second part is also, uh, is when you don't care for other people, because maybe you don't care for other people, there might be some fear about that, too. So I'm going to speak about a bunch of things around the caring framework. Because some of this may fit you, some of this may not, some of this may trigger you, some of this may be like, oh, not my issue. Usually when you do that, it means it is your issue, so I'll let you play with it as you wish. So first of all, let's talk about self-care. Um, it's a thing that I've been talking about quite a bit, because I talk about self-love a lot, which sometimes is um, inter interchangeable with that. But the reality is for a lot of people, they don't really take care of themselves. Yes, you may go to the gym, you may eat right, you may do other things, but you take care of yourself emotionally. Do you take yourself, care of yourself energetically? And that's what I'm speaking about here. Because we do a lot of things externally to take care of ourselves. You know, we're going to go to yoga, go to the gym, go to work out, go ride a bike, do all these different things regularly because we want to be fit and healthy. But do we do any work on the inner levels, emotionally speaking, so that we can feel whole and healthy internally? The external stuff is pretty easy, but the external, the external, the external stuff is pretty easy. The internal stuff, not so much. So let me give you some examples. Um, one of the things I've talked about quite a bit in past broadcasts is about how we don't necessarily heal our emotional wounds and past breakups, past relationships, past challenges. And frankly, it's disconcerting because we end up in this place where we don't, um, well, we basically put on bulletproof clothing, so to speak. We basically make shells and shields and, and cover-ups to pretend we're okay, but we're not. So a lot of people out there you may know, maybe not you, but maybe you know, have this appearance of everything's fine. You know, everything's fine through gritted tea type thing. Everything's perfect, everything's good, they're going to work out, they've got money, everything's going good. But deep down inside, they're emotionally extremely wounded and not willing to face the fact that they are wounded. One of the traps we fall into as human beings, well, two things we fall into. One is that we don't take ourselves seriously when it comes to emotional upset. And two, we think we can just get over it with time. You know, there's, a, there's a phrase out there about time heals all wounds. I call bullshit on that. What time does, in fact, not it doesn't heal all wounds, it numbs them. And that's the thing, people think when it's numb, it's okay and it's healed. It's not true. The wounds are still in there. In fact, all numbness does is like covered up with a with protection, with a with a mask, with a with a shield. Meanwhile, the wounds are still inside. And that's where the problem is if you're not taking care of yourself emotionally. Because the more of those shells and shields you put on, the more impervious you become to be connected. And being connected to other people. Being connected to yourself, for that matter, is a priority that some of us have forgotten how to, or excuse me, is a choice some of us have forgotten how to do. Because we've been so covered up by the past wounds and, and buried them so deep that there's no way to connect back to who we are. And heaven help anybody trying to connect to us. And that's a challenge. So that's one part of the equation, which basically is we don't take care of ourselves on a fully healthy emotional level. I'll have some solutions in a minute. Let me switch to the other one for a second, which is that we tend to overcare for other people. This is the, I don't want to say the epitome, but it's one of the main um, tenets of codependency. I'm just going to bump in the, bump in the camera, stay. 
Okay. And so what happens when relationship oftentimes, and it could be social relationships, it could be personal relationships, romantic relationships, business relationships, family relationships, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's, all, it's any and all relationships this can come into play with. If you find yourself in a situation where you feel like you're caring more and more for somebody, to one, hope they like you, two, avoid being seen clearly, because some people do that to cover up their own vulnerabilities, or three, as a means to manipulate somebody. Yes, manipulate somebody. Ooh, you don't do that, do you? <laughs> That's kind of like, I guess the first and third are kind of similar because they talk about the same thing, to get somebody to like you, which is a form of manipulation. Because the truth, if you live with it, ultimately, is if you get someone to like you by the way you over care about them, you're paving the way to a painful ending. Because the reality is, if you try to make somebody like you because you're being extra nice to them, extra caring, extra loving, extra caring about them, you, you're going to find yourself being in a place where you have to keep doing that to maintain it, which will be impossible. Trust me. It, it, it becomes impossible because you finally give up. And the thing is, when you do, that person who was brought into that story will wake up from that illusion and walk away. So you end up getting hurt again. See, the hurt shows up in both sides. So the recognition is, is when you are in a place where you're overgiving to get someone's attention, to get them to like you, to persuade them to like you, etc., etc., what are you after? Ask yourself the question, what is it you really want? If it's connection, why not ask for connection? The thing about it is we're often not able to ask what we really want because some of you feel if we ask what we really want, we'll be denied, we'll be rejected, we'll be ignored. When you know what you really want, sometimes the biggest risk can be asked exactly for that. Maybe you want to talk to them because you like what they're about. If you don't do it that way, you actually try to get them to like you first. So somehow you've got some sort of pretense or presump or um, no presumption is the wrong word. Well, I'll call it a facade for that matter of somebody liking you. So the, the quandary in this place is is and I guess it's going to come down to the bottom line here is that we have this bad habit of not being truthful. Now I didn't plan on going here. That's where it's ending up. When we try to get someone to like us, oftentimes because we don't necessarily feel like telling the truth, or we don't feel comfortable, or we feel insecure, or we're not sure if they're going to like us or not, rather than just simply asking them directly and saying, look, I'm, I'm, I, I would love to get to know you better, will you be open to that? Or um, I feel like we don't, we're not, on the right, get, not getting up on the right foot, you know, can we talk so we get a bit further along? I wouldn't go out and ask them, do you like me? That may be pushing them a little bit too much. But the understanding of being more honest, more transparent, more vulnerable is a key step. So that's the external. Back to the internal again, because we'll speak to the pain part. That wounding part we carry inside. That's the self-care I want to talk about, because that's one of the pivot points for every relationship I'm aware of, is that we, uh, we have a habit, a tendency, a trait, a training, so to speak, to ignore pain and suffering, to simply gloss over it, or to numb it out so we can move on with life. And I'm going to say this again, I said it earlier in the talk, is it really comes down to being willing to face your own um, pains directly. To face them, to get support to heal them, to transform them because that will actually allow you to be more vulnerable, more open and more able to love more um, easily and more powerfully than you could other ways. Both of those extremes are indications of codependency as I mentioned at the beginning. Codependency externally is pretty obvious when you want somebody to do something for you, you're actually getting yourself trapped in a paradigm where you think that if they love you, they will do these things for you, not being placed where you feel like a puppet on a stream because you don't actually get what you want authentically. Internally, when we don't take care of ourselves, what happens is we start numbing out, as I mentioned earlier, who we really are. So we end up having to seek, we, that's why we have to go seek outside for the love, the connection, and stuff we want because we're not getting it from ourselves. We are under the illusion, oftentimes, that the resources we have inside aren't there, which is not true. Who we are, our whole, amazing, thriving beings when we trust that. And when we trust that, we'll discover something more powerful than that, which is the fact that when we do that, we don't need anybody else at all. That may sound a bit scary. You might go, oh boy, that's not clear. I want to be, I want to pick around, I want somebody to need me. It's like, yeah, no. A need comes out of a place of lack. And a need comes out of a place of codependency. When you're on a place where you want to share with somebody, different energy, that's abundance, that's overflow, that's the healthy way to do things. In all the work I talk about in my clients and teaching, this is one of the biggest things I teach them is how to be so self-sufficient and self-reliant 
that any relationship they go into is adding to that abundance versus filling a gap they think they have. So I hope you can think about this for yourself, to consider both sides of the coin, self-care and over-care for other people. Because both of these components tie together, and oftentimes it's covering up what I would suggest is some level of um, separation inside. It's an interesting topic, so I'm not sure how it's, how it's actually working, so let me see if I've got anything else on this. I'll come back to this point simply this way. Self-care, for me, has to begin with loving yourself. I talked about it a few times before, I'm taking about it again, because I'm adamant that we could do a lot better job of loving ourselves, as people, generally speaking, all of us, not just me, not just you, but everybody. So... When we love ourselves, that's when life changes. When we are connected to who we really are, that's when we can have healthy relationships with everybody else because we start with a healthy relationship with ourselves. It really does become a self-centered or self-centric universe when we own ourselves and love ourselves. So my passion, that's the reason why I created my self-love meditation, is to help you love yourself first. Because then every relationship, ones you're in now, ones you want to have, are more available to you because you're open to loving from an abundant place inside. Loving yourself first, and as you love other people without any attachment, also without any without any um, strings attached. That's the codependent trap I mentioned earlier. So this topic is part of a bigger bigger series I'm going to be talking about again next month with my friend, uh, friend Janie. We got a we got a a video podcast series brewing about codependency. We've got and she's going to be listening about fifteen different topics. So I thought I'd just pull one out of the hat and play with it today. So this is a couple of ideas to play with. I will put the link to my self-love meditation in the comments because frankly, if you are looking for ways to develop your own self-love, self-support, my self-love meditation will help you really easily. Um, I think that's about it for this topic. There's more to it than this, but I don't feel the juice for it right now, so I'm leaving it here. If you have any questions about this topic, please put it below in the comments or message me over social media and respond and let you know. If I'll give you answers questions to your questions, etc. If this isn't making sense to you, let me know that too, because I want to make sure I am communicating this clearly. Um, again, self-love meditation will be in the comments. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day, seven days a week, at least until next week, because that'll be my thousandth broadcast, um, on Facebook Live, on my personal page on Facebook. This is my commitment to serve, to inspire, and to awaken. It's what I do. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, join me at 5 p.m. Pacific time, any day of the week, seven days a week, at uh, facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby the author. Please like my page, although Facebook doesn't show them all there because Facebook's like that. So instead of having 990 broadcasts there, there's only about two or 300 visible. So I have a backup plan. So if you go to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, you can subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine, where every single one of my broadcasts are absolutely, positively, securely stored. <laughs> Making sure of that. And there's a whole lot of topics in there. 990 topics is a lot to talk about. So you can go scan through the titles, find ones to speak to you, because frankly, um, there's a lot to talk about around love, relationship, and self-support. So again, link me in the comments for you to check out for myself of meditation. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, this is my daily commitment to serve, at least for another six, seven, eight days. Because when I hit my thousandth broadcast, I'm going to reconsider what's next. Life is changing, so I'm going to go with the flow. I appreciate you watching as always, and as a reminder, please, Take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow.